Podnuts Daily is brought to you by the official Podnuts Laptop Video Repair Collection. Over 10 hours of HD downloadable video. If you want to learn how to fix laptops, this is the way to do it. I just reduced the price, $54.95, and you can get that at LaptopRepairVideos.com. Welcome to Podnuts Daily, episode number 208. We are here with Door to Door Geek from calling us from Maryland. Is that right? <laughs> yes, sir. From uh, Joppa Town, Maryland, which is kind of like Bel Air. It's a little bit north of Baltimore. Okay. And you work in D.C., though, right? Uh, no, I work in uh, Glen Burnie, Maryland at a state agency. Okay. That's right. Sorry about that. It's okay. Well, let us... Uh, let us get going here. Steve's going to give us uh, some info about computer jobs he's been doing, specifically Windows 7, which is good. We haven't we talked a little bit about Windows 7, but if we could kind of focus on that, I'd be, I think it's a great topic as more and more people are becoming exposed to it. So um, take it away, Steve. What what do you got for us? Um, well, I mean, I've only had a chance to uh, install Windows 7 for four customers. Um, all of them, I use the uh, Digital River uh, way of doing it so they only had to pay uh, 30 bucks for the actual license what's that and, what's a digital river way a uh, digital river is a way that um, <clears throat> if you have a, a genuine e edu email address uh, you can go to there's actually a couple sites but the one I know is a uh, digital river and you can buy a license copy of either I believe it's home or ultimate um 32 or 64 bit for 29.99 wow yeah now the bad thing about it was when they first did it you would download a standalone exe uh run the exe that would download three files um they were dot box files which i have never seen in my life <laughs> and a exe file and then you would run the exe file it would expand those box files into a folder tree that was representative of the of the ISO file. Okay. And it wanted you to do a upgrade right then and there on the computer. Uh, and if anybody knows anything about Windows, upgrading is usually a scary process right. that does not end out positive most of the time. Uh, so I found a way uh, where I could run a program that would take those files and folders and create a ISO file. Okay. Then I found another program that you would run against the ISO file that um, would like change one bit on it to when I stick that in a computer now and I can install a fresh version of any, he picked the 32 bit. So any 32 bit version of windows seven. Okay. So I have now a DVD ISO and all the other customers, I just told them, you know, here's where you go, helped them through it over the phone and uh, through a remote desktop, you know, helped through the process, get the code, I get the code, and now I have the DVD and I have their code, so all I got to do is pick up their computer, backup data, wipe drive, install, and um, re restore data. And uh, the Windows 7 install why uh, while it's a little simple to some people who i know who have done it it's too simple uh but to be honest 99 percent of the time you don't need any advanced f features you just point it at a drive and say put it on the drive right what's, you know, wrong, so with, I, what's wrong with that well they want all these features and options and customizations and don't install this and install this extra part wait who wants that um a couple people in the uh Lounge popped in and said it, and then a couple coworkers complained um, that they wanted to be able to add and r remove uh, Windows um, parts. Wait a minute! Like IIS, the uh, web server, and because oh. I was going to say, what, what, what version of Windows? There's not many versions of Windows that actually allow you to do that. Is there Off in, well, the, in the installation? I don't know of any that will let you do it during the install for a long time. I, be, I believe way back in the day they did. And these are like curmudgeons anyway that I'm dealing with. So I guess, you know, <laughs> they expect it. But I mean, I'm perfectly fine with putting it on the computer and then going back to the um, add and remove components, which is not called add remove components anymore. 
uh, and getting rid of stuff. I see. Or adding stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been running it now for, I'd say, a month at work. Um, and to be honest, they, I believe they've taken a many, many strides in the right direction in the speed of it, uh, the user interface and, um, how I find it to be honest, almost as easy as my Linux to get to the part of the OS that I need to get to right now. Wow. So like I, to, coming from you, that's a very good compliment, isn't it? Well, I mean, here's the, here's the two things that they did right. They didn't break most of the commands and shortcuts that were already been in windows since like 95. Okay. Um, if you hit, um, the windows key and F, it brings up the find window, the, you know, windows key and E explorer windows key and pause break system, uh, system con, um, con, um, troll panel, um, shift control escape task manager. You know what I mean? They, you know, they didn't harm any of that stuff. All that stuff is still in there. So when I have my fresh install and I have to uh, add it to a domain, I could not see anything on my screen hypothetically, and I would still know the keys to go do it. I got you. So that to me is a huge plus. Hmm. But the um, start menu, um, it – while it looks a lot like Vista, in my experience, it's better than the one in Vista. Um, when you hit the start button, you can just start to type. Well, it seems like now it finally re, um, the members stuff that you've typed. So if you just type type it again, what you picked is the first on the list now. I see. Huh. So that to, that to me seems a lot smoother, a lot better experience because, I mean, I don't have to go through the start menu – 99% of the time to find what I'm looking for as long as you know that name. Okay. Do you know what I mean? If right. you want, right. You just type it, it in. Right. It, if you want um, Microsoft Word, start, Word, enter, and you're there. Um, the other thing I like, which I initially despised and thought was horrendous, was the uh, task bar. Hmm. You like it now? Um, I like it because I listened to uh, Paul Thorat which he said one thing you have to do is you have to change the default behavior of the taskbar. What do you mean? Which is to always group icons um, on the taskbar. Because if you have like two windows open in IE, it shows you one square and then like a sliver of a square. 